everyone, so my game vids here with a new video for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 8700K doing an overclocking guide. So the 8700K is a 6 core 12 threaded chip. The turbo boost speeds start at 4.7 GHz and they go all the way down to 4.3 GHz for a 6 core turbo boost. The point of this guide will be to try to get a stable overclock of 5 GHz on the CPU. The test setup includes uh, the following components, a Z390 Gigabyte AORS Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, two sticks of 16 Gigabyte DDR4 3200 MHz G-Skill Rip Jaws 5 memory, uh, Noctua NHD15S for um, cooling, and a Corsair RM850X for the power supply. Now, before we get into a more closer look at how to overclock the CPU, I just want to go over some overclocking basics. What overclocking is, is the ability to run your CPU at a higher frequency than what it was originally designed for. Now the positives of this are you're going to get better performance without paying any additional money. However, the cons are that you could potentially lower the lifespan of your chip by exposing it to a higher voltage. And also if it's done incorrectly, you could potentially fry your chip. Um, Overclocking uh, your CPU is not generally uh, covered under your warranty, so anything that you're doing from this point forward based on this tutorial, you're doing so at your own risk. Now, let's say you've decided that you do want to overclock your CPU. Um, you're going to need to make sure you have a K-SKU chip for um, if you're trying to overclock an Intel CPU. Now, the 8th gen and 9th gen um, Intel uh, CPUs that can be overclocked include um, the Coffee Lake and the Coffee Lake Refresh uh, CPUs. That would be the 8600K, the 8700K, the 9700K, and the 9900K. For Intel-based CPUs, you're also going to need a Z370 or a Z390 board to overclock. Um, and one thing that you just want to pay attention to when shopping for a motherboard is um, the quality of the VRMs or voltage regulation modules. So for this particular um, generation of CPUs, um, Gigabyte seems to have the best quality VRMs. So that's why I went with uh, Gigabyte for my um, test setup. Now these are the general steps for a manual overclock. Um, again, some people may have um, some slight differences, but this is the general idea. The first step you want to do is just make sure you have the latest BIOS for your motherboard. Um, a lot of times there are um, updates from the manufacturer that can affect your overclocking um, capabilities and overall stability, so you want to just make sure you have the latest BIOS. Um, you'll enter the BIOS by uh, rebooting your computer, and before your computer boots into uh, Windows, you're just going to press um, the delete or F2 button on your keyboard. Once you're in the BIOS, uh, one of the first things you want to do is turn off multi-core enhancement. This um, motherboard setting sometimes exposes your um, your CPU to some additional voltage um, that isn't necessary, um, especially sometimes it overvolts your CPU. Um, so it just it's just a good recommendation to just turn it off. Um, later, if you feel like you need to turn it on, you can, but for the initial overclocking um, procedure, just turn it off. Step four, you want to um, go to um, where it says core ratio for your um, in your motherboard settings, and you just want to change the base frequency. Um, you're going to start out at um, a base frequency of 47, um, multiplied by your um, your core clock of 100 megahertz for a 4.7 gigahertz uh, boost for all cores. Most um, 8700K should be able to do this, um, no problem, so that's fine. And then um, because we're increasing the frequency, we're also going to increase the voltage. Um, in general, it's good to increase the voltage in steps of 0 0.025 um, and then run your favorite benchmarking applications such as um, Prime95, OCCT, RealBench, etc. And then just see if the overclock is stable. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to adjust the load line calibration setting. Uh, basically, this just gives your CPU um, more voltage when there is a um, intense workload, such as um, created by some of those benchmarking applications. So uh, it's just good to put your load line calibration setting to higher turbo 
Um, again, this can just help for a more stable overclock um, setting. So again, this is the basic setup for a manual overclock. And now I'm gonna talk about what you need to do in order to do a manual overclock, but do it with a um, adaptive of adaptive or offset voltage. So pretty much all the same steps apply um, for the offset or adaptive voltage um, setting as they do for a manual overclock. But the only difference is that um, with a offset or adaptive voltage setting, um, your CPU isn't going to be running at a constant um, uh, voltage uh, for the duration of you using it. Um, the CPU will um, intelligently detect when you have a um, intense workload and it will raise the voltage to reach your, I guess, um, your desired frequency but when your computer is not in under like a heavy usage such as like when you're just browsing the internet or watching a YouTube video it's going to down clock and it will um, also lower the voltage so definitely it's safer for your um, CPU once you've reached the you know you've you've understood where your um, your chip lies in terms of like the overall quality um, what what voltages will give you the desired uh, frequencies that you got what you want um, so this is definitely a step that you want to do after you've done your initial testing but um, it's a setting that basically will allow you to get those higher um, frequency boost speeds but um, you'll still have some of those energy saving um, qualities of your Intel chip so again pretty much um, most most of the steps are the same the only thing that you're going to be doing uh, that's a slightly different for this gigabyte AORS motherboard is that when you're in the BIOS uh, for voltage settings, you're going to ensure the base voltage is set to normal and then you're going to use the offset to add or subtract um, increments of 0 0.025. Now you might wonder, um, again, in the video that, you're, that I'm going to show you, it starts out at about 1.2 volts um, is, the, is considered normal for the chip and then I'm actually decreasing um, the voltage by about um, I think it's 0 0.015 volts. Now, although that seems kind of counter um, intuitive, um, because as you'll see, the voltage actually exceeds, um, I think it's like 1.248 volts um, some, at, at, at some times. Even though we subtracted, um, it's, it's because of that load line calibration. We're going to set load line calibration to. Um, you might have to set initially to high or turbo, but eventually you could set it to normal. And that 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 fluctuation, um, even though we have an adaptive voltage and we're subtracting um, some voltage from 1.2 volts, um, that's what kind of causes those discrepancies. So when you use adaptive voltage, the voltage that's displayed by the computer is not necessarily going to be what you have entered. But again, in the long term, um, it should generate better energy savings as well as um, just an overall um, safer voltage um, and reliable overclock. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Using a manual overclock with a static voltage, I received the following results. At 4.7 gigahertz um, all-core uh, boost um, at 1.2 volts and turbo LLC. Um, 4.8 gigahertz um, was also done at 1.2 volts with turbo LLC. 4.9 gigahertz, however, um, required a little bit more voltage at 1.260 volts um, with turbo LLC. And then the magical 5 gigahertz was achieved um, after much tinkering at 1.320 uh, volts and turbo LLC. Now, when I tried to um, use the adaptive voltage settings um, for the overclock, <clears throat> The most stable overclock that I thought was achievable was um, with 4.9 gigahertz. At 5 gigahertz, um, some of my benchmarking um, software uh, gave me some really high um, temperatures as well as just overall stability didn't seem like it was, um, while it was stable, it just didn't seem um, like I wanted to keep my temperatures that high for gaming and or uh, multimedia purposes. So I wanted to do the offset um, or adaptive voltage. Um, overclock. So um, I settled on 3.7 gigahertz base frequency, um, but then I changed the turbo boost from one core to six core um, all the way up to 4.9 gigahertz. 
Now, the adaptive voltage, uh, when it's set to normal on the Gigabyte Aorus motherboard, um, it's at 1.2 volts, and I just had an offset of, um, of sub, uh, negative uh, 0.15 volts. So, although it should have been going below 1.2 volts, it actually um, does not because of load line calibration. So, I set load line calibration or LLC to normal, um, and usually kept this around 1.248 to 1.284 volts. Um, I think I saw it go as high as 1.308 volts um, during a premiere uh, session. But overall, it was uh, pretty good. And I kept CCs enabled. Um, the idle voltage was very low at 0.648 volts. Um, and temperatures were pretty good um, using my cooler around 60 um, uh, degrees Celsius for gaming and 70 to 80 um, during some stress testing. So I thought this was the best um, <clears throat> compromise for getting the high performance overclock on all six cores, but then also retaining some energy savings. Um, well, again, that's not really important to everyone. Um, I was having no stability issues in my stress testing and um, I thought it was um, pretty good. I also just want to mention I did not change the AVX um, setting. So sometimes when you're overclocking, um, especially at such high frequencies on all six cores, you need to um, change your or have an AVX offset. So basically, your CPU might boost to five gigahertz on all six cores, but for um, AVX workloads, it might downclock like. Um, 100, 200, 300 megahertz. So usually that's the setting in the in the BIOS that you might want to change. But I didn't have to change that with this um, adaptive voltage um, overclock. And just looking at some of the results, I um, I did some synthetics, I did some gaming tests, and then I also did a uh, Premiere or uh, multimedia test. So 3D Fire Strike, um, the physics uh, test, actually. Um, stresses the CPU out a lot and I saw about a 13% increase using the overclock with Cinebench R20 it's a new version that just came out um, maybe a week or so ago I was seeing about a 13% uplift with the overclock and then with POV Ray there was um, actually a decrease in render time which is excellent in about, in about 11% uh, so on the synthetic benchmarks it, it was looking really good the overclock okay so let's take a look at the gaming results I ran each of the benchmarks three times for the following games just to maintain um, some some sense of uh, stability in all my tests as well as making sure my results were accurate. So I did Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p high settings, Far Cry 5, 1080p ultra settings, and then AC um, Assassin's Creed Origins at 1080p ultra high settings. So definitely at 4.3 and 4.9 gigahertz, everything was um, pretty smooth. We have very small increases in the average FPS. Um, one thing that I wish I would have looked at was um, the minimum and the maximum FPS um, um, during the benchmark runs. I didn't really note those scores down, but when I was watching some other YouTubers um, to see what difference gaming made. Um, uh, with this with this significant overclock um, they were really seeing significant uplifts in the uh, 1% lows um, and 0.01% lows so if that was um, if I had a little bit more time I would have gone back and just uh, recorded those numbers so right now it doesn't look like the average FPS is increasing that much but the, um, the minimums um, should um, definitely increase when you overclock and finally I also did a rendering test because I am using this um, the CPU primarily for video editing and gaming and um, I did a 5 minute 1080p clip um, uh, using the YouTube 4K uh, preset. Um, I had applied two filters to the clip and I also enabled QuickSync. Um, QuickSync for those of you that don't know is a technology that allows you to use the integrated graphics on the Intel CPU to basically help render um, the Adobe Premiere video project files more quickly so um, we saw a decrease from 304 seconds to 294 seconds a reduction of about 3% um, in uh, render time now if you have longer projects you may see a more significant um, decrease in your um, time that it takes to render your videos so that could really be you know helpful to your business or YouTube channel or whatever it is that you're um, doing the video editing for so 
so yeah, that um, kind of summarizes um, the results of my overclocking um, experience. So I hopefully you you learned something from the video, um, and if you did, definitely give it a like. Um, definitely comment below if you have any more questions, and um, thank you again for watching the video. Appreciate it.